Narcissists act like they are all that, but actually there are 10 words that they just cannot handle. And you can use them or you cannot, but I'm going to tell you what they are in this video. I am Rebecca Zong, and I am a globally recognized narcissist negotiation expert, and I'm also a U.S. News recognized best lawyer in America, also the author of a couple of best-selling books, including Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist, and Win, which has already been released as a Amazon number one bestseller, but... It hasn't even been actually released yet, but if you pre-order it now, you get early access to all kinds of really super cool things. So go to slaythebully.com and check it out. And if you are new here, then welcome and make sure that you subscribe to this channel for all kinds of really super cool things. And if you are coming back here, then welcome back, my wonderful viewers. It is so great to have you here to my channel. As you all know, we talk about all things narcissism, high conflict, and how to break free from those relationships, whether they are professional or impersonal. Today, we're going to be sh talking about the shocking words, the 10 words narcissists just cannot handle. So you can use them at your discretion or not. Never put yourself in any kind of danger though, of course. Number one is empathy. They don't like the word empathy. Why don't they like the word empathy? Well, because they don't have any. And so they struggle to handle the concept of the word empathy as it goes against their self-centered nature. And they find it difficult to understand or connect with the word in people's emotions or experiences. So they just shut down when you try to use the word empathy. They get very defensive. They get very angry when you use the word empathy. If you ever try to express your feelings to a narcissist, you notice how they dismiss your feelings. They turn the conversation back to themselves, or they fail to acknowledge your feelings. Or if there's a group setting, you know, when somebody tries to say, share a personal story or a struggle, they respond with a lack of empathy. They try to one up a person or they show indifference or impatience. They don't like that. They, they're very uncomfortable with the idea that they might have to show empathy toward a person. That is number one. Number two is accountability. They don't want to have to be accountable. They don't want to have to be held accountable. So they avoid taking responsibility for their actions and they tend to blame others or external factors for any negative outcomes. The idea of being held accountable threatens their fragile self-image as it would require admitting flaws or mistakes, projection, deflection, as they normally do. So if you confront a narcissistic person about something that they did wrong, they might deflect the blame onto others, but most often you. If it's a professional setting, it's a coworker's fault or it was unforeseen circumstances, aunt died. They just try to shift blame onto something or someone else. So accountability is number two. The next one is vulnerability. They do not like vulnerability. So showing emotions, showing their heart, that requires a level of openness that they're uncomfortable with. They fear that it makes them look weak. They don't want to look weak in the eyes of others. They don't want to have to look imperfect and it undermines their this facade that they have. If you've ever seen them, they have like this facade of in invincibility and they want to downplay their struggles. They've got this, these two halves of themselves. They want to avoid discussing anything about vulnerability, discussing, you know, fears or doubts, or they want to have this unwavering confidence. They want to look like they are perfect at all times. They act like they hate you all half the time. Are you ready to transform lives at the deepest level while also earning money and taking your career to the highest heights? Well, if so, then my brand new 
Slay Master High Conflict Negotiation Certification Training is exactly what you have been looking for. Get ready to acquire the essential skills necessary to guide your already existing clients or team members through the intricacies of dealing with challenging personalities or you can become a brand new certified coach and ignite an amazing new career and start off by knowing that you can make a real difference in people's lives. Hi, I'm Rebecca Zung and I'm an attorney and I've been named a best lawyer in America by US News and I'm also a globally recognized narcissist negotiation expert. I'm also the author of a best-selling book, Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist and Win and I'm the founder of the Slay Method of Negotiating with High Conflict Personalities. I am a certified coach also and I, as a certified master coach, in the slay method you will be able to guide your clients or your team members through the complexity of dealing with high conflict or narcissistic personalities including using the power of my proven slay method i've literally helped thousands of people across the globe with this method and it has saved lives in negotiating people from lives of drama, trauma, and chaos to step into lives of freedom, possibility, and purpose. And you will be able to help them do the exact same thing into finding lives of freedom and ultimately respect, acknowledgement, and that feeling of knowing that you have helped people at their deepest level, at their deepest level of their soul, and you will be able to be paid for that. And it's not just about helping others, by the way, it's about investing in yourself and your own future. By joining this training, you will be investing in your own professional growth, enhancing your own quality of life and unlocking limitless earning potential. Are you ready to take charge of your destiny and help shape the destinies of others while making more money doing it, then join my free workshop, High Conflict Negotiation Certification, Boost Your Authority and Your Income. Discover why high conflict coaches are in huge demand right now, both personally and professionally. Learn how to coach people through crises, master emotional triggers, and conquer their fears all while boosting your authority and your income. Don't miss out on this exclusive life-changing opportunity. Just click the link to sign up for this free workshop right now. I have a video on why the narcissist hates you, by the way, um, which you can definitely check out. And I recommend that you do. That's number three. Number four is forgiveness. I don't want to talk about forgiveness. They hate that word. You know, they struggle to forgive others because it involves letting go. They don't want to have to let go of their need for power and control. Holding grudges is what they want to do. They want to maintain that sense of superiority and see themselves as morally superior to everybody else. And they want to refuse to forgive others. You know, if you've ever dealt with a narcissist in these situations, they, they, were, they hold on to grudges for years, years and years and years. I've seen narcissists, like they brought up stuff like, like nobody has remembered before. Oh, remember that thing that you did to me like 15 years ago, you know, on this trip and we ha went out to this dinner or whatever. What in the hell are you talking about? Like, that's what they do. They hold grudges like forever. That is what they do. And if you've seen it, put, I've seen it in the comments below. I mean, how sad is it to be them, to be walking around with that crap inside of them? It's so poisonous. But if you're dealing with it, it is extremely draining. If you need additional support, you know, make sure that you get the additional therapy that you need for sure. And if you don't have access to therapy, we do have a sponsor on this channel, which is BetterHelp. And you can get access to that through betterhelp.com forward slash Rebecca Zung. We receive commissions on that only because it's a sponsor, but it doesn't cost you any extra. We just want you to have the help and support that you need. And we have a support group here, which is Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung on Facebook. Join that for sure as 
as well. The next word that they hate is equality. They don't want equality. They don't want things to be equal. They think that they should have it all. They don't want you to have balance. They want all the, the, the attention on them and nothing for you. You know, they might say they want things to be equal sometimes, but they don't want that. They want the constant need for validation coming this way. And it threatens their sense of entitlement. And they believe that they should have special treatment and special recognition in a social situation, right? All the attention and everything should be on them. That's why they constantly ruin holidays, which I have a whole video on that too, by the way. In a professional setting, they dismiss everybody else's contributions. They think that their ideas should be more valuable. And then point number six is constructive criticism. They hate those words too, you know, because they have extremely fragile egos. So they can't handle criticism, extremely sensitive. You know, I always say narcissists hear tones like dogs hear whistles. Like even if you don't have tone, they hear tone, especially any kind of criticism whatsoever, no matter how delicate you try to make it seem, they perceive everything to be a person personal attack. They take everything super personally. And that's how, why they end up like sabotaging themselves and their own lives and their own jobs. If you've ever tried to give a narcissist constructive feedback, they reject any kind of self-improvement or growth. They, everything is an attack for them. And at work, team projects, they reject any kind of helpful suggestions right? They don't want any sort of feedback because it's an attack on their perceived superiority. Point number seven is the word that they hate is authenticity. They hate the word authenticity because of course they're not authentic. Everything about them is fake, including their, their power, their sense of power, power is totally fake. So that's why I always say to you, the power that you're building through this knowledge and becoming the truest, most powerful version of yourself is actually authentic. And their power is built on a house of cards. What you're building right here is true, authentic power. And once you get on the other side of this, you will become the most powerful version of yourself. And that means building your true love, your self-love flaws and all. They don't have that. Brene Brown talks about the power of vulnerability. And that's what you you are building here. You're, you're building that they constantly are wearing masks. And, and when they are confronted or exposed, they re react to that through anger, through lies, through avoiding facing the truth. That's how you best build your leverage. And that's how you build it through my slay methodology, through my strategy, leverage, anticipating and focusing on you. And if you don't have crush my negotiation prep worksheet, grab that at winmynegotiation.com. It's a free 15 page ebook to help you start winning your negotiation. Grab that now at winmynegotiation.com because it will help you get started in winning your negotiation. The next word that they hate is boundaries. They hate the word boundaries, of course, because they don't think they should have any. I mean, they want full and total control, right? As soon as you throw up a boundary, they want to just step right over it because they believe that everything and everyone belongs to them. They see people as property. A boundary is just a challenge for them. They want to just cross it as soon as you put it up, but you have to maintain your boundary. You have to say, as soon as I'm putting up a boundary, I'm going to hold it. I'm going to fix it, fix it and keep it fixed. They're going to ignore your space and disregard your boundaries. So regardless of, of their feelings, you've got to take care of yourself. And then number nine, the, ne the next word that they hate is emotional intimacy. They want to know everything about you, but they're not going to tell you anything about them. They don't want closeness. They don't want to be exposed. They don't want that potential criticism or rejection because they want things to remain superficial. They don't want emotional intimacy. They don't want that deep connection. They feel very at risk with emotional vulnerability. They struggle very much. They choose instead to focus on outside things, external validation and accomplishments and external admiration. And then the last one, is self-reflection. They're not doing any sort of self-reflection and they 
don't want anyone to even think about coming to them for self-reflection, self-awareness, and they run like hell. It's like, you know, vampires with daylight with uh, self-reflection. So that's why they don't want to go to therapy or anything like that. I mean, if they're forced to go to any sort of like marriage counseling or anything like that, it's just a big scam. It's just a big manipulation scam to try to make everybody think that the other person is the bad one and they're the good one because they're not going to do any sort of self-reflection. They're desperately trying to avoid Avoid looking like they're the ones that need to take any sort of accountability. They have to keep this self-perceived image of perfection. They have to do this pro project, deflect, lie in and deny it. And that's what they're going to constantly do. They're never going to self-reflect. That's why a lot of times people who are mental health professionals won't even take narcissists as clients because they're not even capable of self-reflecting or, or having any sort of self-awareness. Those are the 10 words, the 10 shocking words that narcissists just can't handle. I would love to know which one is your favorite, which of the ones that you've tried, that you have seen. The one that I didn't include in here is narcissist, because obviously they don't love that word either, but these are definitely other words that they just cannot stand. I mean, definitely an eye-opening, shocking words that they just can't handle when you're trying to have a conversation with them, when you're trying to have a normal, reasonable, regular relationship with a narcissist, these are just regular words that you would want to be able to have a conversation or, or be able to connect with a person with, and you're just not going to be able to. Now, if you like this video, give it a like, give it a share, share it with somebody who you know could use it, could use this information. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure that you do that now. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, you'll get notified when I release brand new videos, which is every day where you get access to this crucial knowledge, which I share every single day. The next video that I want you to watch is one question that sets up a narcissist collapse because it's so important for you to understand what is going to set up that narcissist collapse. It's really important for you to know this information when you go to negotiate with a narcissist, when you're going to communicate with a narcissist so that you can protect yourself. Remember that they only win if you give in. You don't need to do that because you have access to so much good information and great resources right here. Remember that today is a great day to start negotiating your best life. I'm Rebecca Zung, and I will see you in that next video.